So he has agreed with me that he believes in a singularity as a God. That means that Allah's light cannot be separated from Allah himself. The argument that Allah can't be compared to anything, therefore he can't be compared to this thing, Allah compared his light, not himself. So when God says Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, and it says his light is like this, then what's being described is not God. It's one of his attributes, characteristics or something that he possesses. The issue with this is that in the very verse that says that Allah can't be compared to his creation, it lists attributes. But the issue is, this is the hadith-based Muslims. So I think the Christians and the hadith-based Muslims are both wrong, right? So if we go to Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 2, 40 and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign and he reigned in Jerusalem for one year. His mother was Athaliah, daughter of the king, king of Omri. But if you go to 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 26, 20 and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to yeah. reign and he reigned in Jerusalem for one year. His mother was Athaliah, daughter of the king of Omri. So it doesn't make sense either. So let me reply. Let me reply. Now notice. Are you, are you done? Let me reply. So, so notice how the Muslim wanted to get off the topic of their hadith as soon as God possible. So let me, so let me, let me do, let me, let me deal. Okay, so you reply. So bro, 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 you still have a problem in your Quran alone. Here's the problem in your Quran alone. Are you listening? Okay. Can Allah be compared to anything in his creation? Now say that in English. And there is nothing comparable unto him. Say it louder. There is nothing comparable unto him. Say it right to the back. You can't compare things with God. You can't compare things with God. You all heard him say that. Can you compare anything to Allah? No! So now let's read what the Quran says. Surah 24, Ayah 35. Allah is the light. Everyone say light. Light! Of the heavens and the earth. The parable of his light. Everyone say light. Light! Is as it were a niche. Everyone say niche. And within it is a lamp. Everyone say lamp. The lamp. Say lamp. lamp. Enclosed in glass. Everyone say glass. glass. The glass, say glass. glass. The glass as it were. A brilliant star. Everyone say star. star. Lit from a blessed tree. Everyone say tree. tree. And olive. Everyone say olive. olive. Neither of the east or the west. N whose oil? Everyone say oil. oil. How many created things did we just list? Five created things and Allah compares himself to them. Okay, guys, guys, that was um, a classic logical fallacy. Uh, it's called a non sequitur argument. Uh, he does not follow. Now what he said was, can anything be compared to Allah? And yes. then he compared Allah's and light to something. Right? No, 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 no. Allah said his light, the analogy of his light is like a lamp within a niche. So what Allah did was and compare the light of Allah. One second. Allah just gave a comparison for the light of Allah, but he's treating it as if Allah gave a comparison for Allah. So again, again, all cats are mammals, all dogs are mammals, all cats are dogs. That was an example of what he just did. So although Allah did give a comparison of his light as a lamp within a niche, he did not compare anything to himself. So these two things are not a contradiction, it's a contradiction. But he hasn't addressed the numerical contradiction in 2 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 2, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 26. And all of you noticed the nice little deflection about lamps is very theatrical. So allow me to reply. Allow me to reply. So. Did you all hear him say that Allah was comparing himself to himself? That's what he said. The light of... Stop, are we going to interrupt one another now? Is that how we're going to do this? I apologize, sir. Very rude. Because in a shouting match, bro, trust me, I can go louder and longer than you can. I apologize. So, okay, thank you. Right. So notice, ladies and gentlemen, 
he said that my analogy was a false one because Allah in his book compared his light. But what did he compare his light to? Nothing. He said, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, the parable of his light. Now think for one second. David, you're crying, man. Allow it. What when it says that his, his light, as it were, is one enclosed in a lamp, in a glass, in a niche? What do any of these words mean if Allah is not comparable to anything in his creation? Let me finish. If I say light, what do you imagine? If light, exactly. If I say glass, what do you imagine? <laughs> if I say oil, what do you imagine? If I say a tree, what do you imagine? So, if Allah is not comparable to any of these things, then these words are meaningless to you. No, yeah, I'm nearly finished. So the Quran might have well have said this, because this is what it means. Allah is the blah of the heavens and the earth. The parable of his blah is as if there were a blah, and within it a blah. The blah enclosed in blah. The blah, as it were, a brilliant blah, lit from a blessed blah, and all a blah, neither of the east of the west, whose blah is well nigh blah. Because if these words are not like anything you can think or imagine, then these words are meaningless. Yes. I want to do a quick English grammar lesson. Because I know some people know English, right? Yeah? So there's something. Hey, wasn't let me finish, man. Calm down, man. Like, yeah, calm down, big boy. Calm down, big boy. Because I know you're big against, listen, you know, women. Can I finish, please? But you don't intimidate me, chav. Yeah, don't intimidate no one. Listen, guys. Sorry for touching. Can I please please? Yeah. Guys, quick English lesson. So there's something called a possessive pronoun. So if I say his car, yep. like the car is not him, right? So if I compare something to his car, I'd be like, his car is like a Ferrari. His car is like a spaceship. I'm not comparing a person. I'm comparing something that belongs to him. So when Allah says his light is like something, and you try to argue to the crowd that this means he's comparing himself to this thing, or the blah, as you put it, it's a bit confusing to me. It's like people don't know English. So when Allah says he is the light of the heavens and the earth, and then he says his light is like dot dot dot, the argument that Allah can't be compared to anything, therefore he can't be compared to this thing, Allah compared his light, not himself. So it doesn't make sense guys, and if you need to brush up on your grammar, or your, your understanding or grasp of possessive pronouns, oh. then go do that. Oh, like, otherwise, there otherwise there's no way you can see that as a legitimate point. And, the the well. and the second, hey, once, once again, second point, second point, nobody has addressed the first point I made still now. It's just sitting on the table lowly. Okay. So, second Chronicles and Second Kings, just unaddressed. We've, we've slapped away two weak, weak arguments. Let's wait for the third while we ignore this question. Okay, so the topic that I was talking about that this brother interrupted, and I welcome his interruption, I'm happy to debate with him, was about this passage in the Quran. I'm not going to get deflected onto talking about a topic that I addressed earlier today over there. He can watch Soko films and hear how the response would go. So, listen to what he said. He tried to give me a grammar lesson without understanding the grammar. He talked about the possessive pronoun, that Allah wasn't comparing himself to, his light, to the light, but comparing his attribute, the light, his light, remember. But now think about the example that he gave about the Ferrari. But then someone told you that when you imagine a Ferrari, that can't be the thing that we're talking about. If someone said to you, 
Your car is like a Ferrari, but everything you can think of, everything that you can conceive, and everything that you can imagine a Ferrari to be is not the car. That means that the word Ferrari means absolutely nothing. Because it can only mean something if you have a point of reference. No, no. He said that the parable is about the light of Allah. Well, I want him to tell me what light means in this context. And since this attribute of light has been compared to a glass, a niche, an olive tree, oil, and a lamp, I want him to tell me what the terms tree, olive, oil, glass, and niche mean in this context. Because if he can't tell me what they mean, and he can only tell me what they're not, then this is not clear guidance as it claims to be. It is a mumble jumble of meaningless words. Um, so, just to go back again, because I see where the brain parts happen. So if you just go... I'm going to have to use that one. Yeah, I know, I know. I, like I like that one. Open the window. Yeah. But check this. So, so check this. This is the brain part that I just want to clear up here. Now, what we have is, with this car reference, I think I'll confuse you guys. God cannot have anything compared to him. Because there's nothing comparable unto God. It says that in the Quran, Surah al class. However, God owns things, such as his light, it belongs to him, his earth, and you can compare them to a million different things. And there's a reference and it makes sense. So when God says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, and it says his light is like this, then what's being described is not God. It's one of his attributes, characteristics, or something that he possesses. So God's saying that he created something and he describes that. And then you saying that's the same as him describing himself or comparing something to himself. It's just a little brain fart, a little cross of wires. Let's clear that up. So when God, <laughs> when God talks about the light... We should do this again. This is fun. I know, I know. This is I'm a fan. I like this. I like this. I follow you on YouTube. Go on, go on. But listen, I'm a fan. If you are not aware of that... No, relax, relax. It's all right. What I'm saying is... It's all right, uncle. I've got him. I've got him. I've got him. What I'm saying is that the little mix-up between God's comparing himself to something else versus God is talking about his light and comparing it to all the things that he compared it to is another thing. Secondly, he set a premise, a supposition, if you will. If I can't explain what that particular verse means, right, then it means that it's meaningless. Now that, that's actually quite facetious because understanding is a process and I'm sure you, you increase your understanding of the Bible day by day. So that kind of set the bar that high, mate. Uh, it's quite ridiculous. Can and I, I would never set my expectations so high as to if I don't understand everything right now, it's all meaningless. That, that's a bit crazy because I would say there's a few verses in the Bible. For can I, example, can I, can I reply? there she lusted after men whose genitals were like that of donkeys and Size of donkeys. Were, yeah, it's like you could explain that to me and it might be very interesting. Maybe Israel and, and Egypt, you know, they're, they're like hard, can I, can I, can I reply to your oppression. argument? Okay, I'm, I'm still. Let me just okay. Say. I'm just saying there's a little bit of a confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no contradiction there, and it's nowhere close to the 42 and the 22 contradiction I presented. Can I, can I, can I reply now? After, go for it. So, notice I asked him just to tell me what does light mean? What does a tree mean? What does an olive mean? What does glass mean? What does a lamp mean? What does oil mean in this verse? And notice he didn't do it. It's a lot of pressure. So maybe, <laughs> maybe he'll come back to that. I can. No, let me finish. Me let me finish. You had your chance. You'll get another chance. Don't worry. Everyone gets a second chance. Everyone gets a second chance. But allow me to address the verbal diarrhea that you've just heard. Because we can all use these kind of metaphors. Yeah, you started it with your, your verbal I, I thought, thought. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was brave hilarious. Brave it's brave brave a good one. I like debating this guy. He's funny. But being funny, but being funny, isn't the same as making a logical argument. They're not the same thing. So, in the Qadi, in the Quran, we have a description of one as Allah's attributes. I accept that part of his argument. Yes, he accepts it. I never, I never <laughs> deny it. Holy. Yeah. Holy. yeah. So before, before my brother starts doing cartwheels and setting off the fireworks, 
Let's just address the problem. Muslims believe in a God that is an absolute one. Yes. 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 A monad. Yes. Monotheistic. Monotheistic. A monad. Singular. 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 No second. Yeah. No second. No plurality. No trinity. So the. Thank you. Thank you. Listen. Are you ready? Let me finish. So he has agreed with me that he believes in a singularity as a god. That means that Allah's light cannot be separated from Allah himself. So when it talks about Allah's attributes, that possession of his attributes is not distinguishable from himself. And if it is distinguishable from himself, then they have contradicted themselves in claiming to believe in a monad and a singularity. But, but, that attribute is still divine. Even if we grant that in some way it's separate from the person of Allah himself. That means that when the Quran says that nothing and no one is comparable to Allah, that also includes all of his attributes. All of his attributes. And that includes therefore his light. And that means that Allah is comparing his light to things that are created. So, Allah has either contradicted himself by saying that you can't compare me or my attributes to anything in creation because he does it himself. All these words are utterly meaningless frivolities. They are sounds and nothing more with no meaning and no context. Please start your answer by telling me in this verse yeah, what, like what the tree is, what the olive is, what the oil is. Tell me what these things right, no, mean. No, no, no. So let's just deal with the first thing, the light, the thing that's been compared the most, right? So Allah, if you look at other parts of the Quran, Allah talks about the disbelievers want to put the light of Allah out with their mouths. Allah talks about the Quran being a light and a guidance. Allah talks about people walking in the light versus someone that doesn't have light, right? These things, guidance itself is described as light in the Quran. So when Allah talks about his light, I just want to nip something in the bud though. There's a, there's something just fundamentally illogical. He just made a premise, which I think is fundamentally flawed. He said, because God is mono in nature or singular. Monad. Monad. His attributes and characteristics have to also not be compared to anyone, right? So you can't compare anything with his characteristics. That's fundamentally not true. God is the most merciful. Some people are merciful to a different degree, right, yes. God is the most, you know, all of his attributes can be compared. What can't be compared is God himself, right? Because, and in this context of Allah saying that in Surah Al-Ikhlas, Allah says, Allah is one, Allah is the self-sufficient. He was not born, nor does he give birth. And there is nothing comparable unto him. This is talking about the nature of God in reality, right? When we're talking about the characteristics of God being the most just, God gives justice to people, being the most merciful. God gives mercy and the capacity for mercy for human beings. So this is, um, again, I don't want to go back to brain fart, but it seems to be working really well. That's my best one. Yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is, yeah, that's just, I don't know. That's like a little well, faux pas, olives, right? So now when it comes to olives, when it comes to all of these other analogies that are given, right, yeah, you can go and speak and, and see Clearly it's not an olive. No, no, first, no, but this is what I'm saying to try to say to you, right, yeah? So, you can see that there's loads of different analogies that are describing the guidance of Allah. Now when he speaks about trees, for example, other places of the Quran, it talks about bad earth and the good earth. And the bad earth being something that doesn't grow except with great sparsity and difficulty. And the good earth being something that grows with the permission of its Lord, right? It, when we're talking about all of these things, it's basically to reflect. Now to talk in, in the context of every single analogy has one specific answer, that's not based on context or the individual or the time or the era or even how you're feeling that weekend and how you're feeling and what God was trying to say to you when you read it. These things might feel, mean different things for you depending on what, when you read them and how you feel when you read them and what God's trying to say to you in that particular moment. And I believe in a, in a Bro, divine talk to me, book. Talk to actually, me, talk to me, talk to me. So I believe, um, apologies, I don't want to make you feel ignorant. Otherwise I'll just stop my own conversation. No, no, I, apolog I, kind yeah. of, I got sidetracked. Yeah. But I'm saying like, these things, these examples are all utilities for us to reflect upon and increase our faith. Thank so you. I'm saying, depending on, I might read it on a Monday yeah. and it means one thing to me. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying that 
there's maybe um, Allah says in Imran that no one has a perfect interpretation of the Quran. So, so and Allah will clear up the differences okay. in the day of judgment. Can I so reply? I'm saying to you that that requirement to know each and every one as if there's an answer or a pop quiz is not there. Secondly, I've given you a working understanding of the word light, yeah. just so you can get, get like some sort of flavor so, so, of, of the other parts of the Quran okay. to describe it. So, and thirdly, the difference between characteristics being able to be described versus God himself. Yeah. And God at no point does he say, yeah. no, no, none of God's characteristics can be compared. So, he says God cannot be compared. Let me ask you this question. And your first so, so, so let me, let me, no, no, brother. First argument still not been addressed. The Second first argument had nothing to do with the topic. Yeah, it does. It does. You it jumped in onto my topic no, and my know. discussion. Well, well, okay. well, you answer you, off the finish. And you so, control, you control so, the so, what we got, go, go. listen I mean, what, yeah. to what he said. He tried to say that Allah himself cannot be compared to anything in his creation, but his attributes can. Absolutely. So that means that the attributes of Allah can be compared yeah. to the created world. Yes. And he's thumbing up, he's saying yes. Yeah. I'm merciful. There we go. There we go. So he's saying that Allah can be, Allah's attributes can be compared to things in creation. The issue with this is that in the very verse that says that Allah can't be compared to his creation, it lists attributes. Listen carefully. He is the creator. That's an attribute of the heavens and the earth. He has made for you pairs from amongst yourselves and pairs among the cattle. By this means does he multiply you. There is nothing whatever like unto him and he is the one who hears and sees. So in the very verse that says that Allah cannot be compared to his creation, it lists three of the attributes that cannot be compared. No. No. This passage, this passage, this brother is saying that the attributes of Allah can be compared to creation, but Allah himself cannot be compared. God is known through the working of his attributes. We know that God is the creator because he created. We know that God is merciful because he gives mercy. We know that God is the first because nothing comes before him and he is the last because nothing comes after him. In other words, if you don't know God through his attributes, you don't know God at all. You know nothing about God at all. So he is essentially saying, that these attributes do not communicate who God is. No, nearly finished. That means, that means, in terms of, brother, in terms of God's attributes, in terms of God's attributes, he says they are comparable. These are the only things that we know about God at all, which means that all knowledge to God is comparable and when it says that Allah is not comparable to God it is once again saying nothing. Okay. Right, so um, there's a bit of a mistake there. He mentioned some things that are attributes. Uh, he mentioned some things that are attributes and something that are not attributes. God creating the heavens and the earth is not an attribute. It's an event that occurred that God did. Creator. Just well, no, no, no. Him being a creator is a title that comes from him creating. Is that not, not an attribute? attribute? No. So, for example, mercy, being merciful is an attribute. And it's an attribute that human beings possess. But creating the heavens and the earth is not an attribute. It's not an attribute anyone else can possess. You either did it or you didn't do it. Right, yeah? Like, did you create the heavens and the earth? No. Did he create the heavens and the earth? Yes. It's an action. It's an act or a job that somebody did and somebody else didn't do and nobody else did except God. So, so for him to present that the same way as an attribute really doesn't make sense. So I'd like to say that the attributes that are attributes such as being merciful, all these things, they can be compared and the qualities or the things that God has done that belong only to him that are part of his essence or what make God God, i.e. creating the, the heavens and the earth, being the self-sufficient master, these things are the things that he's alone in. Being the one who creates and, and no one else creates. Being the one who destroys, no one else destroys. Being the one who punishes, only like he punishes. There's things that you compare about those that punish, but in terms of those that possess hellfire, there's only one being that possesses hellfire. That's my answer. But guys,
Bro, just out of courtesy, I'm now going to answer your question at the end. Oh, yeah. 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 Second Chronicles also. Awesome. Okay. So, I mean, I will have to look into it in more detail. And once I look into it in more detail, it may, may very well change my answer. But my instinctive answer is to simply say it is a scribal error. Because in the Christian faith, we don't make claims about our Bible that you make about your Quran. So if there was a scribal error that had simply changed an age and nothing more, then for us this is not a problem. This is not a problem at all. I think that's a great answer. And in my opinion, maybe two thirds of the Bible is a scribal error. So let's just You'd have to prove that. Yeah, yeah, we'll go through it. You'd have to prove that. I'm just saying, no problem. So you know the difference between... Wait, 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 bro. I, I was just doing that as a courtesy really at the end. I'm not going to have I'm another a, discussion. No, no. We're finishing. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I think you make very articulate points and I really enjoyed this conversation. I really enjoyed it as well. Really it's a pleasure Thank to speak. So in fact, I enjoyed it. In fact, I'm I enjoyed it so much. I'd like to give you a gift. Excellent. I'd like to give you a gift. Yeah, that was a really fun conversation, man. Yeah, yeah, man. man. All verbal diarrhea aside, all brain farting aside. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounded wet, so have a shower afterwards. Okay. okay. So here you go, bro. Just trying to think of a nice one for you. There you go. What Christians believe at the end of the world? Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, it's, uh, it's about, it just explains what well, Christians believe. You've got a already, so I've got yeah, to give you. No worries. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I think that's enough. It's a pleasure. That's enough for guys. Right. You don't want to give Bukhari. Next time. No, 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 Bukhari. No, Bukhari. No, Bukhari. No, 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 I don't believe in Hadith. Yeah. And, and I think the points that you make are on point. And um, I, I've watched your videos before, and, and out of all the videos I watched, I thought that yours were on point. I want to speak to you because I think our beliefs are closer than anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, 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 from speaking to you, like even your. You made something that's very akin to the Christian energy uh, attribute distinction in terms of the attributes of Allah. We, we agree on a lot more than we disagree I, on. I, I, well, I think we disagree on certain fundamental things that just can't, we can't get around. Yeah, like God having kids. Oh, well, well, it'd be interesting to know what you understand by that. So let's talk again next week. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and we'll talk some more. I can't wait. I, can't wait. <laughs> I usually work Sundays. Do you have an email address or something? I'd love to. BTB. Well, you watch soccer films, so it'll be captured on mic. You can hear it, but you can type it. BTB Soko at gmail.com. That's why it's funny. Bravo, Tango, Bravo. Sierra, Oscar, Charlie, Oscar. It wasn't meant to be. I think. Yeah, it's all right. My, my so, did. Yeah. BTB Soko at gmail.com. Drop us an email. I'll let you know though, and I probably just want to say this for the camera. Um, I've got nearly a thousand emails, so if you are waiting for an email, I am desperately doing my best. I go through all the pages of my emails and I do some from each page, but I've got nearly a thousand emails to reply to. So if you're waiting for an email, I am very sorry. I will get around to you, but at this rate, some of you might be waiting years. <laughs> I'm going to send so. you an email tomorrow and I'm waiting 2025. All right. Okay? Yeah, 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 definitely. 2026. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk. We'll talk. God bless you. All right. Take care. Yeah, let's do a quick wrap up. So what we saw in the, the Hadith literature, is a clear description that Allah has either an attribute or a created thing that veils his other attributes. Now, if it veils his attribute, i.e. Allah's attributes can be restrained by something else, then that simply means that Muslims don't have any complaint about the idea that the divine attributes of our Lord Jesus Christ can be restricted or constrained by him being veiled in flesh. Tabernacle literally means, when it says in the Gospel of John, the that the Logos tabernacled amongst us, it mean, literally means to enter into a tent. Well, what's a tent except for a material thing that you could equate to a veil? Now, whether that is a, a created thing, as the Muslims that I was arguing with said, or an uncreated thing, the reality is the same. Allah's attributes are restricted by something else and they don't see any contradiction in it, which means that they cannot complain of contradiction when we believe in the Incarnation. Furthermore, the Quran states that Allah is not comparable to anything He has created, but in a single verse, Allah compares Himself or His attributes to five created things, which if they don't mean anything that we can think of, imagine or conceive, mean that this book is not clear guidance because it doesn't say anything. If these words do mean something, then Allah has compared himself to something created, even though he says, you can't. God bless.